Hi guys, we're live. We're here back with some Jewelum School this Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope everyone is doing well. Our fearless leader is over on um, Neelay's YouTube channel today. And she's actually at this moment finishing up a project with him. So we're kind of overlapping just a smidge, but uh, we're, we both have some fun projects planned for tonight. Uh, unfortunately, my sidekick, or I'm her sidekick, however you want to look at it, she will not be with us today. Um, Amber's not feeling well, so we're just going to kind of, um, I'm just going to do the best I can here without my sidekick and see what we can come up with, and hopefully we can have some fun. Um, I am at my parents' house again. Um, we are actually here this weekend for my husband's, uh, or for my mother-in-law's uh, memorial. She did pass away a few weeks ago, so we are here in Western Pennsylvania, so I am bar barring my mom and dad's computer in their area here. So if you hear TV, you hear dogs, that's just kind of par for the course, guys, and I know you won't mind. You're always so good about that. So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of time to come on in. Of course, if there's any questions right out of the gate, let me know. I'll be showing you what project we're going to be doing. It's going to be a super fun Tila bracelet. And you can't ever have enough Tila's, that's for sure. Jules has a lot of variety over there. Uh, some real beautiful um, beads in general, but especially, you know, we have Tila's, we have check mixes, things like that. But I think what I'm going to start out doing here, guys, is since um, Jules is, I'm going to kind of change it up a little bit here. Since she's still over there hanging with me, Elaine, why don't we just look through some fun beads while... Um, We'll check out these new check mixes that Jules has. And I'll put my stuff over to the side. Just kind of giving you a little taste of some of the new beads that she has in the shop. So I'm just pulling them down here. And I'm just going to get my camera flipped around. Hopefully I don't make you too sick doing this. But let me get my camera flipped. There we go. And here is our mat. I'm limited on space today, guys, so please forgive me. But we're going to make the best of it here. But there's always fun looking at check glass mixes, right? And I'm going to kind of pull these up so we can kind of see the names of them in case anyone goes looking for them. You'll certainly know what the names are. Let's see. So I'm going to, I was watching Jules and Neelie. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's go on to her page so I can let you guys know what each one of these are. Okay, so I believe this one, this one here, this blue one, this line here is actually called, it's called Jewel Blue Check Glass. Now I'm going to bring you down closer here once I get this dumped out here, but and check it out. And I do have my bead scoop handy, believe me, so. So let me bring you down closer to these beautiful check mixes. And again, the lighting, guys, I'm sorry. But you can certainly get an idea of what these mixes all have in them. Just some beautiful check glass. There's a beautiful crystal there that we have. Some table cut uh, check glass certainly can always use that. Look at this one, guys. Isn't that pretty? It's a table cut, but look at the sheen on that bead. Just super gorgeous. Just really fun, fun stuff. Look at the little Buddha. So this one, again, is called Jewel Blue, and that is over on her website. Guys, don't miss out because the stuff that she's put into her shop lately is just super, super gorgeous. Oh, thank you for the condolences. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. Zakia, Zakia, is that right? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And hello, Melanie, and hello, Bonnie. Welcome in, welcome in. We're looking at some gorgeous check glass mixes here, first out of the gate. I mean, why not get into some beady goodness right out of the gate, right? So that one was actually called Jewel Blue, in case you mix, missed that one. And then Jules was kind of just giving us some examples, but she, you know she has lots of Toho's over there as well. 
Um, but she sent like a couple coordinating seed bead mixes. So you could kind of see how you could blend them back to the seed beads pretty easily. So you'd be able to make a really fun project. You know, you have eight O's and you have 11's and you have a check glass mix. That's really all you need in your hemp, you know, and she does have some new. Oh, I did good with your name. Good. I'm glad to hear that. So that's a beautiful, beautiful set there. And I'm just pulling them as they come out here. So let's see here. This one's called Midnight, which I guess the name stands to reason. Okay, I'll dump this out here. This is Midnight, and it has some beautiful um, grays and blacks and charcoal colors, some AB beads in there as well. If you see anything in particular you're liking in there, you want me to pull out, um, certainly let me know, guys. But look at that piece. I'll get my camera to focus. That would be good. It gets really difficult with me whenever I have um, multiple things on my mat. But, yeah, really, really pretty. Some letters, which is super cool. You could really make some fun stuff with those. You know, just kind of blending them in. And this, it all, it looks like um, a lava stone, but it is um, not a lava stone. It's just a beautiful piece of check glass that has that texture on it. And there's Miss Amber. She come in to help us answer some questions. That was really nice of her. And then we have just some really, really pretty beauties. There are some actually crystal beads in here as well, guys. So, and then here are the two she picked for that to kind of blend back with that. And I think that's going to be gorgeous. This one's called Transparent Rainbow Black Diamond. And this one is Transparent Rainbow Black Diamond as well, just an eights and 11. So really pretty mixes. I just had to share. And we still have two, two more, I think, to look at. <laughs> I mean, I know you guys never mind looking at beads, right? And I figured this would be a good way to start our show. Okay. All right. I'll get that picked up. Didn't need my bead scoop after all, did I? Um, and I do only have one light with me today, guys. So uh, please bear with me with the lighting. Um, this is this, this is my favorite. Sorry, dogs, you know, what are you going to do? This one's my favorite. This one, of course, has the purples and turquoises and pinks and all that. And then those are absolutely my favorite. And I don't know how you guys feel about that kind of stuff. But I love the colors in this mix. Just super gorgeous. And let me find the name for you guys. This one is called... Hmm, where are you? There. Is that it? Yeah, Romance. That's called Romance. It's either romance or dreams. I think it might be dreams because romance doesn't have the turquoise in it. So, yeah, just really, really pretty stuff. Look at this. These crystals. Can you stand it? Big chunk. And that'd be a big ring, wouldn't it, guys? And then, of course, here's our CBs to go back to that. And then I saved the best for last, of course. We're all turquoise colored loving people here, I think. We like to use that stuff. Oops man down um we like to use the turquoise and i see a lot of you enjoying to use that in your pieces and stuff like that so um this mix here i think is going to go out sell out pretty quick okay and i don't know what to do with my other seed oh i put them in there okay <laughs> sorry i'm a little bit scattered tonight a little bit here so here's a beautiful one with lots of turquoise in it Aren't they beautiful, Melanie? I think she did a great job with these mixes. Another man down. Boy, I'm going to be <laughs> get beads up. But see how, like, like, this one has, like, that pop of white in it, and it just really brings out the other colors, you know? And look at that cool bead. I mean, that's just super, super neat. So, just some really cool, cool stuff in here. Look at that one. It's, almost, it's like a matte finish. It almost has like a rough finish on it. Really, really neat, guys. 
so and then of course these are the two that uh we'll circle back with that look at that it's gorgeous um this is they're both opaque turquoise so perfect perfect selection for that one so all right well we had some fun looking at some beads here i think we're gonna get down to business here and since it is um given enough time for folks to come on in we're going to get on with our tila project so everyone up to tonight everyone hope you're all doing well doing well out there all right so there's that and one more thing i want to go over with you guys quick before i do get started um the bead pattern kit that you've seen uh, Amber and I work with. We did bracelets and we did a ring with. There's actually been uh, that all sold out. So Jules decided to kind of make a hybrid of that. And with this hybrid, she kept these three basic colors the same in it. But then instead of having the turquoise, she put in this gorgeous amethyst. And I know my lighting is not doing it justice, but so you can still get the kit. You're just gonna have this beautiful amethyst in place of the other. But I just wanted to show you that so you could see just how pretty it is. So you're not losing out in any way, shape, or form. It's still very gorgeous. Yeah, really pretty. She did a great job curating that for sure. Okay, guys. So down to business here. We are going to be working on a Tila bracelet. Now, this is one that I designed. And you can see how it's kind of lumpy and bumpy in here. And I want to explain that out of the gate. The reason... I didn't use Toho's or Mayuki's in here. I just used like a cheaper seed bead. So the, the, size on, the sizing on the beads isn't consistent. So you'll see like here or there where they look like they're a little bit too snug in there. But by using like Toho's or your Mayuki's, you should not have that kind of problem. But this is the basic bracelet that I wore on one of our shows. And everybody uh, said that they'd like to get a demo on how to make this. So I thought I would do that for you tonight, and it worked out well since I'm here by myself. I mean, that's not well. Believe me, I like my Amber here, but um, it's a project that I'm going to be doing. So let me get everything cleared out and moved over, and I'm going to bring my loom in. Now, I did, I did go ahead and warp my loom, guys. Um, of course, at any time, if you have any questions on warping, you can certainly reach out to us. And again, I am limited on space here, guys. So please work with me. So I have my loom and the pattern here is um, 2332. Three, two. And if you know what I mean when I say that, that means that those are the spaces that I've left for my beads to fit in there. So I've left two spaces, three, three, and two. So that way, that's a basic bracelet, but with the the variations of beads, I think it makes it look a little bit more complicated than it is. So that is what our warps are going to look like for that. And you'll see how I'm using the sticky mat. I've been really enjoying using that lately. It seems like it does keep everything nice and in place for me. So basically, I'm going to be using this, this uh, wildfire, and this is the 0.006. And I'm going to be using about an arm span or an arm span and a half of it. A lot of times folks will recommend that you take two arm spans. I'm a very tall girl. So <laughs> I don't take two arm spans because then I'm like drowning in wildfire. So for myself, I feel uh, much more comfortable doing um, an arm span or an arm span and a half. So I'm just going to take that and measure it. And I'm going to put my cover back on so my uh, thread doesn't unroll. And I'm just going to snip that. Move that out of the way because I like to catch things with my thread and my needle. So we have our wildfire end here. I know that's hard to see. My camera is just being grumpy. But I'm going to just take my pliers here. And I think we may have showed you guys this trick before. But if you weren't around, you can also you can see it again here. You're just going to take your pliers and you're just going to squeeze the end of that just slightly of your wildfire. And I don't know if you could see how that flattened out there. Okay. So that just makes it really a lot, whole lot easier to thread your needle. Okay. And the older I get, the more I need to do that, believe me. So I just threaded my jewel loom needle. 
okay? And I'm going to take the other end, and I'm going to leave myself about a four-inch tail. But I'm going to go ahead in here. I'm going to leave my, not, myself enough room here. I'm going to use a ribbon crimp closure. As you can see on this one, that's what I did, a ribbon crimp closure and then um, a magnetic clasp and a chain. So I want to, next week, we're going to uh, take this off the loom and I'm going to show you then guys how to do a ribbon end closure in case you don't know. But I'm still going to give myself enough room here and I'm just going to put my thread through and like I said, leave myself a four inch tail or so. And then I'm just going to tie that. And I don't tie it real, real tight because I know I'm going to come back and I'm going to weave those threads back through and tie it so you can kind of disguise it. And I'll show you that next week as well. Okay, so we're going to move our beautiful beads over and I'm going to show you these ones. This is the eight O's that we're going to be using in our project. Those are the side beads here. Okay. And these one, this one is called Transparent Rainbow Frosted Grass Green. Just gorgeous. You can see all the AB in it. And AB makes my heart sing. I don't know if it does anyone else. So I am going to go ahead and move those over so I can have access to them. And then we have these beautiful Tila beads. Now, like I said, guys, there are gorgeous Tila beads over on uh, Joel's website right now. I mean, run, don't walk. They're really gorgeous. I was looking at them this afternoon and I was drooling, but this is a really nice travertine, green travertine bead in the Tila's. So just gorgeous. I think it's going to make a really nice piece. So to get started, let's see here. Let's move these over here too. Move my pliers because like I said, I like to catch my string on that. First thing I'm going to do, I, as you can see, I work from the bottom up. And you can feel free to work from the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top, whatever you're comfortable with. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up two of my 8 seed beads, one of my Tila beads. Okay. Get the, when you're old, you have to do it this way, guys. So I put my Tila bead on. So I know whenever I'm putting that on, you see how that's laying? I want it to be laying in that way so I can come back through the top of that. If I put it on through the top, it just wouldn't work out as well. So you want to make sure that you're able to put that put that in through that way. And then you're going to take another Tila. Okay. And two more seed beads. This is going to be your first go through of your Tila beads. Okay. Yeah, but I really like the colors, too. I, I think it was a good choice. I mean, of course, Jules has such good taste. But I kind of said, this this is the idea I'm thinking. You go for it. And, of course, she always comes through. So, basically, what I'm going to do here is I, I move my beads down the thread there, guys. And I'm just going to push them up through. And what I'm going to do is sometimes if I have, like, a more difficult type of bead to put through, I start with the ones closest over to my needle. And I will push the, those ones up through and then put my needle through those, okay? And then I can kind of work across, especially like, for instance, right now I'm working on a rose bracelet. And the rose pattern that I'm doing is very intricate. And it's like 27 rows of wildfire across. So I kind of just slowly work across, pushing up as I'm working across, and it seems like it works much better to make sure everybody gets in their correct lane, if you know what I mean. So that, just over the top there, make sure you're going over, over the top of all of your warps, and then you're just pulling that through. Okay. So now we're going to be doing the second set we're going to go through the second set of holes on our Tila. And I'm just going to pick up two seed beads. And all we're going to do first is we're going to pick up that first row of seed beads, okay? And we're going to take our needle. And you can see I have my seed beads right here. I'll move them down just a hair on the thread so I don't, you know, knock them off because, you know, we could do that. And I'm just going to put my needle up and under through the T-list, going under, 
And then as I go under, I'm going to bring this through. And you'll see where our other two seed beads will come in and pop to where they need to be. Now, we're going to catch those guys on the way back through. That's how I like to do it. I'll catch those on the way back through because they're just kind of sitting there loosey-goosey now. Okay. So we'll catch those on the way back through. And then we're just going to pick up the next two Eidos. Kelly says she's working on the hat bang kit on my large goddess, breaking out original and trying this project now. I think I have similar beads in stash if I'm working along. Oh, awesome, Kelly. Yes, I love it when you guys can work along with us. So as you can see here, guys, I just popped this second set up. The, this, the difference with that second row is you're picking up the second set of seed beads after you go through your telas, okay? So now we have those there. If you can see them, see if my camera is going to focus today and, be, and play nice. There we go. All right. And then I'm just going to take it up over the top like we normally would. And, and that's what I'm going to catch those seed beads back in there and that second hole in the tila beads. All right. As I go across there. And there's one row. One completed set. Okay. We'll do that a few more times so you can kind of get it. But... Uh, really simple. I love, I love the simplicity of it, but yet I think it looks like you've spent a little bit extra time on it. You know what I mean? Kind of tricky. I like to do things that way. So let's do another row here. So we're going to pick up two Eidos, a Tila. Come on, Tila, you know we want to. And another one. These are so pretty, these travertine. Also, I mean, I get, I, I kind of get travertine and Picasso kind of confused sometimes. Does anybody have a trick on being able to tell the difference between, or are they basically the same thing? Oh, hi, Fran. Oh, that's awesome. I, I will look forward. I hope you guys post your bracelets that you're going to make here. So we did two Eidos, two Tila beads, and two more Eidos there, guys. Okay, and I'm just going to get see how my string's kind of tangled in there. I'm just going to get that out of the way so we don't get a knot. And again, I'm just going to take that and push that up through. And then go across the top of my warps. Just make sure you're seeing the metal of your needle as you're crossing over the top, guys. I know we preach it, but... It's going to save you some work later on. You can fix it. You can go back and fix it, but just easier to catch it on the first go round. I'm loving these colors, though. I mean, I think this, I mean, it's green, but yet it's kind of almost giving me a little bit of turquoise vibes, too. I mean, the, the, the Eidos are. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. Oh, so pretty. So then we're going to do our second row now, guys. So we're going to pick up, first, we're going to pick up two Eidos. If I can do that, we'll be able to miss. I didn't have too much coffee today. And as I have those down on my needle here, I'm going to take my needle and put it through both of those Tila beads underneath the warps, okay? Yeah, first, trash, get your coordination. <laughs> and if you, you're, make sure you're putting them underneath the warps because you don't want, um, you want to make sure that it's locking everything in. And if you go under first and over next, like we always do, you're going to make sure your beads are nice and locked in there, guys. All right, finally got that through. All right. And there we have that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our second set of Eidos. How many Tila beads? Um, you know, I haven't sat down and counted them. I have three strands here to work with. Let me, 
And I know these are a wee bit smaller, the ones that I have in the bracelet here. I can count these for you and let you know. I'm, I was just going to kind of play it by ear, but I do have the three strands to use if need be. Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 36, 38, 42, 4, 6, 8, 52, 52. And this is made 6 inches, and then I put the rubber clasps in the... And these, I think these are six millimeter. And to me, guys, those look like they might be four millimeter, unless I'm crazy, which I could be. But I think, I think they're four, whoops, I think they're four millimeter and the others are six. So you probably would need less of the six then, you know, stand to reason, I guess. But hopefully that helps you, Kelly. Hopefully that helps you figure out what you want to pull from your stash. So now that we've got that second set in there, I'm going to go over the top, as we always do, and then lock that in. Do we have any other questions tonight, guys? Anything else? Now, I'm using um, some lighter hemp for this project, but you could use the darker hemp. And the beads wouldn't pop off as much. If you wanted more of that natural look, you could certainly do that. Um, I thought the white hemp would really make the beads pop off nicely. And I, I, I wanted to kind of um, do that. But I also used the green wildfire because I thought that would look pretty along the white. So, you're, you know, of course, your call, guys, on whatever you like to do. But So we're just going to continue here. And if you hear the fan running, I do apologize, guys, but my uh, folks have a nice and warm house. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so I'm just putting on my Eidos and my Tila's and two more Eidos. So I don't know if Jules and Neele are done talking yet or not over there. I'm sure they were having a good old time making their, their project. They usually are on a little over the time they're supposed to be, just slightly, you know. All right, so I'm just pushing those up under again and just going over the top. Do a few more rows here for you. And then once you get the rhythm of it, just like any any of the looming, but it just goes real quick because these... Um, the Tila beads, you know, the size of them. So two Edo's. And then underneath. I think the trouble I have with this part is as I'm feeding my needle through trying to get in there, I'm using my left hand and I'm definitely a righty all the way. So I have to use my left hand for anything. It gets a little bit rough. And here we go. Dog is barking, guys. I do apologize. Are for the course. Yay, I'm so glad. Sure, absolutely, Kelly. I am anxious. You are going to have to put a picture up, girl. Be anxious to see it. And then we're just doing the same over the top. We'll do a few more. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I just enjoy doing the actual beading and watching it all come together. I could stay on here all night with you guys, Gavin and beading. <laughs> Whoops, caught on the corner, see? And that's only with an arm's length. So <laughs> imagine how dangerous I'd be with more. Okay. And I didn't, oh, I guess I didn't pick up my second ones. So let's do that because we're going to need them. Hey. I'm sorry. What you too, what Amber? I missed that, honey. <laughs> Doesn't take me long. Doesn't take much for me to miss things, I mean. So I'm just going over the top again. And you just keep weaving in your beady goodness here, as Jules says. 
And I'm so glad that you folks found us over here on YouTube. We're going to be, uh, from the sounds of it, um, we're going to be on YouTube uh, is where our broadcast is going to go. We will, in general, be posting that the, the um, posting the live on when it does go live. Let me get my words, use the right words. Um, when it does go live on YouTube, you'll see it come up on Facebook, but it'll just bring you right over to YouTube with us. So we'll be working from here. I'll move that up just a hair. Does anyone else use the Beetle on Sticky Mat? I'd like to hear some input on that. Yeah, the colors are really well put together, and you can thank Miss Jules for that. I had some input. I, you know, I said I really like these particular Tila beads. See, I mean, guys, come on. <laughs> it's like anything that is remotely close gets stuck on me. Um, I did pick the Tila's, but I told Jules, I said, how about that with the Ados? I'm sure you'll come up with something gorgeous, and of course she did. But like I said, I think this is the a green travertine and these, if you're looking for those in particular, um, transparent rainbow frosted grass green, these Edo's are guys. I, I love these. I mean, I'm not really a green person, but we used these last week in our St. Patty's stuff too, in our earrings and bracelets and stuff. And I really, um, I really like them. Kelly, you do like using silicone beading mats. Well, I have forgot that I had this for a while because I was always using it just for my tying station. And then I just came across it the other day and I'm like, I need that back on my life for my looms. So. <laughs> so let's get a few more rows on here, guys. And I know I keep saying that a few more, a few more. There we go. All right. My cookie baking mat. Oh, that works too. That works too. It's silicone. And this one is kind of sticky though. Are the baking mats kind of sticky? Or is it just this, the silicone part of it? Let's see if I can get this up closer for you guys a little bit. All right, that's what we have so far, guys. That's really cute, isn't it? Really coming together cute. Not to toot my own horn, you know, but it is sticky. Oh, okay, okay. Very good. Yeah, I didn't know that baking mats were ever <laughs> sticky. Of course, I probably don't bake very much, much to my husband's chagrin, I guess. Here we go again. Putting the lefty to work. I'm wondering, let's turn it on the side so we can see it a little better here, guys. It may be me, but I'm wondering if there isn't something going on with the hole there. And I think there might be. I think we're, yeah, I think we're having some issues with the hole. So what we'll do, and this is a good thing because um, thrift store is always good, Cal. This is a good thing, guys, because you can see what you do if you have like a blocked hole or a non-existing hole in one of your tilas and it does happen no matter where you get them from seed beads and tilas i know um a lot of us season beaters we are we know that um your duos all that it can happen with i used to have the rule of thumb where i would go and um check all my holes before i started on like bracelets like this but as you can see i didn't put so i just took my needle off and i just took the needle in through this loop here and just started pulling it so we could get it out of there. And then I'm just gonna continue pulling it out. 
and uh, slide that bead off. And then we'll get a better look at it. There we go. All right, let's see. That one's good. Yep, that one is closed up on the top completely. So we would have been here all night, guys. So it happens. Because when they do string the telas, they only put them through one side to keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to thread my needle back on here, guys. Okay, now we still have our two seed beads on there, and we'll pick up our tila. That worked for us. Yep. There we go. And then I'll look at this one. Yep, those are good. Hey, now. Shh. Never fails. Can't help it. They like to party. They like to party. Oh, she did. She just finished with Neelie. Well, welcome in, Rose. Nice to see you. I knew they would be uh, quite over time, so I didn't want to wait too awful late to start because... I'm kind of getting tired myself, so. But we are making a super fun Tila bracelet tonight, Sandy. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up two Eidos to go through that second row. Again. And again, we're going to go underneath and see if we can go through it correctly this time. Or not correctly, but there's actually a hole there. There we go. Good guys. I went right through. And then two more potatoes. Do we have any questions here tonight, guys, so far? Amber's been doing a great job of keeping those in check. And I just saw Miss Joan pop in. I know, they were gabbing it up over there, weren't they, John? <laughs> and there we go. Do you guys want to see a few more rolls, or do you think you got it? Let me know. I can beat all night if need be. Burgers <laughs> are already tired. I'm, I'm sure of that. Well, we're, we're not going to be on here super long today, Joel or Joan. We're just going to get the basic pattern down. I did miss the beginning, so I'll have to re-watch to see the start. Yeah, certainly. You can do that, Fran. And I knew you guys would be kind of filtering over after they're live. But, but I'm going to do a couple more just for the folks that just came in. So then that way you can kind of get the gist of it. Of course, you can re-watch it as well. But I'm just picking up two Eidos, and I was explaining at the beginning, um, the warp on this is two, three, three, two. And what that means is I'm leaving two spaces between here, three spaces here and here, and another two here. So on my original, that's going to be these little nachos in here. See? Okay, you can also do um, this on the Wisdom Warrior as well, or really any loom that you have in general besides the baby loom if you did it on the baby loom you can make a cool ring you know but so i picked up two 80 seed beads and i'm going to make sure i don't get that same bead and put it up here there we go and then i'm going to pick up two tealas and then two eight o's again and i'm going to feed those beads down to the bottom Sure, Rose, sure. Um, these are Eidos, and then these are six millimeter Tila beads. Move them back a little bit so you can see them. These are the Tilas, and these are from jo uh, from Jules' website. She has some gorgeous Tilas over there. And then these are Eidos, as I said, in this beautiful grass green rainbow color. Very simple. You know, a lot of you probably have it in your stash. If not, like I said, there's some beauties over that way, but... 
I know when you're a seasoned beater, you got a lot in your stash. Believe me, I know. So I dropped that down, guys, and I'm just going to push that up underneath. And you can see when I'm putting these up through, of course, we have our emptiness up here from our second row. And I'm going to show you how you can go back and catch that. So we're just going to go ahead and lock this row in. And that just means by going over the top and going through our 8-0s, our tilas and our second set of eight O's, okay? And that's locking us in pretty well there. Okay, and so we're gonna pick up, now for this next row, we're gonna do it a little differently. We're gonna pick up two eight O's. And then I'm gonna drop those down. Can you use six? Uh, you could use six O's, but you're going to have to give yourself a little bit more room to groove on these outside. So you may need to do like three and three, three, just do three across on all of it on all four lanes. You probably want to add at least another space to give you some room to groove there. So I picked up my second eight O's and I dropped them down and I'm going to take my needle or I was pulling it under and I'm not ready for that yet. And I'm just going to put it into the second set of holes on both of the Tila beads. And if you're like me, it can be a little painful, but if you're not left-handed, but we get it eventually. So we're pulling that. Okay, and you can see how that's going to fill in for us there, guys. And we're going to lock it in because you can see right now it's all loose there just because we went through it the under, un, underneath just the one time, you know. So we're going to pick up a couple more um, eight O's. What did you use to warp, Trish? I used hemp, and this is the 0.5 hemp, actually. So you could use whatever hemp you have. You do not have to have a uh, warp thread between every bead. Absolutely not. Nope. And that, that can open up a whole new world for you, Becky. Because <laughs> you, you do not have to. As long as they'll fit in your lane and lock in fine. And I'm saying lane, you know, like these. Um, in between your warps. You can, the sky's the limit there, kid. <laughs> so there you go. And there we are, guys. That's what we have so far. So let's bring Joan up here. You're all right to come on up, Joan, <laughs> whether you want to or not. <laughs> let's add you up in here. I guess I'm halfway dressed. Just excuse my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You look gorgeous as always. I'm going to flip my camera while we have your beautiful face up there. I'm going to close the lens this time so I don't make anybody sick in the process. But now you're really going to get sick. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm just you're always lovely. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming over. And Miss Amber did jump in here tonight, and she it was nice to just, even if she could just comment with us, just to have her here and have some fun. I was really busy um, putting up some links. Um, okay. So I don't know if you answer this question. What did you use for the warps? I did, but I will go over it again just in case okay. we missed it. This is hemp, and this is the 0.5 hemp. Okay. Awesome. But you could use, you know, the other, the 0 0.10 as well. You know, either one works fine. Um, I just chose that. I do like how the 0.5 like really sits down in the grooves of the original. I have to say that, but I do, I use both all the time. So, all right, guys. Well, I think that's it for tonight. And the plan is we're going to come back next week. We're going to show you the beautiful, um, creative soul box for this month um for our course that we're going to be having we're going to be having a beautiful bracelet over there as well so if you haven't checked out the creative soul you're going to want to do that beautiful subscription everything is curated by him by jules and just gorgeous everything i've ever gotten from there how about you joan agree oh yes i can complain <laughs> about anything it's awesome no. It's all in its high quality, gorgeous materials. And then you get the courses on top of it. 
you don't or you aren't just given the the materials and saying here have at it you get a course that teaches you how to use the materials which i think is the super a great benefit of it you know and an extra benefit is it's also a great community absolutely there that is a, a wonderful that's probably the top benefit actually <laughs> because we uh, we have a beautiful community and we do get to have our zoom calls together and that's super fun so Thank you, Kelly. And thank you, everyone, for tonight. It was super fun. Um, are you talking about me? My necklace is gorgeous. Oh, I guess, Joan, you don't have one. I was, I was staring at it, too, when that comment came through. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh, I'm twisting it the wrong way. Uh, but, yeah, thank you. It is um, just a very simple one as well. We could go, go through and definitely do this sometime. And, you know, it looks, again, I like it to look more difficult than it really is. <laughs> That's my kind of tutorials, you know, so, so, um, okay, guys, if there's not any other questions, then I'm going to hop off here. I'm going to go visit with my folks. I'm hoping my husband gets home here soon. He's been out and about taking care of things today. Um, so everyone, I hope you have a wonderful evening. And Joan, if you don't have anything else to input, I think. Uh, no, I don't. I'm ready to go out and visit around the fire pit. <laughs> I bet you are. You put your time in tonight, didn't you, girl? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to miss most of the show. Oh, no worries. No worries. It's all good. We do miss you, of course. But okay. we'll see you all next week. And uh, we'll look forward to taking it off the loom then and seeing our kit. Bye, guys. Bye. So, wow, that was it. Oh, <laughs> I hit it. Yes, here we go. <laughs>